All right, let's get into this. Prop 22. This is uh, coming up on the ballot in California, November 3rd. I made a video about it. Got a lot of comments, a lot of venom. So uh, we're going to look at some of the viewer comments and we're going to further break down this issue so that you all have a clear idea of what's involved in making uh, your decision as to how you're going to vote. Uh, for Prop 22. And stick around. I'll share with you why I'm still going to vote the same way uh, come election time. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy drinking my mm, morning espresso. Love it. It is uh, 8.37 on Thursday morning. Okay. So before I start, I want you to look underneath the video. We're doing a poll. We want to know how the viewers uh, uh, of the Rideshare Guy are going to vote on Prop 22. So it'll be down below in the description and also pinned in the top comment. Um, you just click and you can cast your vote. We got some questions to ask you and we'd love to get your feedback so we can kind of see where uh, the, the whole group, the Rideshare Guy world, uh, is planning to vote what the feelings are about prop 22 so again that's just right below the video in the description and also pinned in the comments all right let's jump right in number one what can we be sure of well it seems like a lot of the viewers are pretty sure about a lot of things right it's like they've got a crystal ball and they know exactly what's going to happen if the if the proposition passes and if the proposition fails so last week I uh, put out this video, uh, Prop 22 for Lyft and Uber drivers and how I will vote. All right, let's look at some comments. Uh, first, we got Victor Rodriguez. He says, normally he likes the content, but I didn't agree with him, so now he doesn't like the content. Um, <clears throat> employees that you have to be assigned a shift. So he's saying, how can I make the assumption that because uh, Uber has employees, they're going to uh, make the drivers be assigned shifts. Well, that's exactly what happened in New York City, right? Um, they've got guaranteed minimum rates there and drivers have to pre-reserve blocks of hours based on how many trips they did the week before and on their rating, things like that. So we have an example of that happening already um, in, in New York City. And I see no reason why if uh, Uber has employees, they're not going to manage those employees, right? They're going to manage them down to they're going to they're going to put you um, in the best place at the best time so that they can maximize your productivity. It just it seems clear to me if they have that option to do that, to control, they're going to. All right, let's look at some more comments. A.S. Newman. Uh, so he says he's going to read the pros and cons before he votes. A.S. Newman, I salute you. Uh, Mofo Soto, I hope we will take a lesson from this and realize we can't depend on Uber Lyft to provide for us. Well, that is true, and we should never have ever um, counted on Uber and Lyft uh, to take care of us. So I agree with you there. Um, Rocket Boards, the one aspect of this people are forgetting is this is beyond rideshare drivers. Perhaps, uh, I mean, the Proposition 22 is about drivers. It's uh, rideshare drivers and delivery drivers. Yeah, so... I don't know if I agree with that. Um, Michael S, you just lost all credibility with this video. No on 22. So this is what's going on in the world, isn't it? If people disagree, they immediately discard the people that don't agree with them. So, so I think there's two things we can be sure of. First, if the proposition passes, there will be less flexibility. So we can use New York as an example. If Uber has that kind of control to schedule you, um, they certainly will, right? Just makes sense. So the question is, how little flexibility are you going to have, right? They're going to, you're going to have less flexibility. Okay, it's not going to be like like it is right now. Drive whenever you want. You'll be assigned times. You're going to have to, you know, log in, log out, and uh, that'll be your shift. You're going to have shifts. So that's one thing we can be sure of: less flexibility. The second thing we can be pretty sure of is there's going to be less drivers. Okay. Um, only like 10% of drivers are full-time drivers, right? The rest are all part-time drivers. So again, put yourself in the mindset of Uber and Lyft. 
this thing just passed, you have complete control over who drives for you and who doesn't, you're gonna select the full-time drivers, right? You're gonna want people who take this seriously. All those part-time drivers are not gonna be getting jobs. Uber's not gonna hire 10 hour per week people or 20 hour per week people, right? Okay, number two, Uber and Lyft really want this proposition to pass. Normally, this would be um, a, a big negative for me uh, because I find that whenever Uber and Lyft really want something, it's not good for me as a driver. When they put out these you know, supposedly great things for us, when I break it down, and I'm usually pretty hard on them, um, I find it's not in the best interest of the driver most times. But in this case, they wanna keep things the way they are. They don't wanna make a, a, a incredible change in, in how they manage their, uh, their drivers. I get that. They also wanna save money, right? They don't wanna spend more money if they don't have to. So I get that too. So it comes down to, you know, it, it, are things so bad now that you wanna make a big change and, and lose some things that you have or not? Well, let's look at some more comments. Okay, this is from, uh, Dario Naharis. Dara K said in his op-ed piece that gig workers deserve better. Nothing is stopping Uber from Im implementing those changes. That is true, but he's not gonna do it unless he has to because it's gonna cost more money. Yep, I, that's just how a businessman operates. I don't know. You can't expect a company to generously dole out more funds to their drivers for, for no reason. Um, especially when it, it's working the way it has been. Leonardo DiCapo, Jay and Harry have now become propaganda machine for Uber. Okay, so what utter BS, I gotta say. I'm as hard on Uber and Lyft as anybody. And the, 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 the video I made last week was for me, okay? I was sharing with you my thought process and how I'm going to vote. And if you don't agree with it, don't agree with it. But I'm not a propaganda machine at all. Right? I'm just saying, here's what I'm seeing on both sides. And given what I'm seeing on both sides, this is how I'm going to vote. All right. Uh, San Diego Rideshare Pro, your hourly, average hourly rate is high due to the city you're operating in. Yes, I agree. And again, the video was about me and how I was going to vote, not how everybody should vote. Rideshare Otter, um, if rideshare drivers were truly independent contractors and Lyft and Uber wouldn't keep lowering our rates, I wouldn't worry about Prop 22. OK, um, that's true. Uh, and that's that's the problem is and I say that in the video as well, that I don't like Uber and Lyft having control over the rates. Um, but either way, they have control over the rates. They have in, <laughs> if you're an employee, they're going to have control over how many hours you can work. Um, you're not going to work more than eight hours a day because then you're into overtime. You're probably not going to work more than 30 hours a week because then they got to offer you health care insurance. So there's a lot of things that are at play here, but that's a good point. And then Morteza Tajali, um, out of the 180 million they were spending on this, how much did they offer you? All right, so here's another uh, person uh, who's insinuating that I'm getting paid by Uber. I mean, it's just freaking stupid. Let's go to number three, what's important to you? So that's what you have to think about, what's important to you? If you're a full-time driver and you want to drive shifts uh, for Uber and Lyft, um, then you probably are, are, you know, opposed to, or, or no, you're probably yeah op opposed to Prop 22. If you like the flexibility, like I do, um, then you're for, you're for it. It's it's neither one of them is ideal. I think we got to get that out of our heads. There's no ideal here. There's no one is going to be great, okay? They're both like mediocre options, uh, but it comes down to what's the most important for you. So here's a couple of things to look at here. I, I pulled this, uh, the Affordable Care Act requires employers to offer health insurance to employees working at least 30 hours per week. So again, think about this. Would Uber and Lyft hire you for more than 30 hours a week when they can just book you at 30 and and then not have to pay the health insurance that's 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 common practice now uh that companies are only hiring part-time people up to that limit 
uh, because they want to save money, right? Again, you got, I'm thinking like a business person. So you're probably only going to get 30 hours a week. That's, that's a really very realistic expectation if you vote, uh, if you vote no uh, and you become an employee. The other thing, okay, and this is from uh, this SHRM website, how to calculate daily and weekly overtime in California. All right, so what we see here, um, overtime pay at a rate of 1.5 times their regular rate uh, in excess of eight hours or 40 hours per week. Okay, so that means you're only gonna work eight hours in a day. So that may be okay for most people. For me, that was not okay. I tended to work long days because I like to work uh, maybe five long days and then get the weekend off instead of working six short days. And again, I don't think you're gonna be working more than 30 hours because that way they can um, not have to pay um, any kind of um, health insurance. So number four, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. So I found this preliminary polling, okay? Los Angeles Times. California not sold on treating Uber Lyft drivers as independent contractors, new poll shows. So despite amassing the largest campaign war chest in California history, they're in danger of coming up short with voters on the ballot measure, all right? The UC Berkeley Institute of Government Studies poll shows that 39% of, of the 5,900 likely voters surveyed would side with the companies Okay, that would be a yes vote. And 36% um, said they would vote no. Okay, so uh, that gives the yes on Prop 22 just a slight lead. We've still got what, like 40 days left before the election. So it's really close. It's really close. There's no clear winner, um, even with Uber and Lyft spending $180 million on advertising, most of which we haven't seen yet. We're going to see over in the upcoming uh, weeks. Be sure and vote down below. We'd love to hear what you have to say about this one so we can see how our readership and our viewership feels about Prop 22. Key takeaways. Well, this is a good video for me to make. I, uh, I love engaging with the comments. And um, all you can do is look at the trade-offs. As I said, there's no panaceas here. There's just no panaceas. It's exciting times, exciting times. What are the trade-offs? You gotta really look at the trade-offs and then for your values, what's important to you, okay? If you vote for it, great. If you vote against it, great. <laughs> I just know how I'm gonna vote and I'm voting for it, okay? Because for me, the flexibility is the most important thing. I don't care about most of the other issues. I just wanna know that I can work when I wanna work and then take months off when I wanna take months off. That's what's important to me. What's important to you is really the question. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you liked it, that'll let more people see it. Um, subscribe to our channel. Sign up for notifications. This is Jay Crater saying you'll go out and have a great day. Take it easy. Uh, uh, smell some roses. Take a nice walk in the sunshine. Take some deep breaths and uh, have a great day. Be safe out there.